Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Evan with Underhill Bonsai, and we're located in Folsom, Louisiana. Today I'm going to be speaking with Nate Murray. He is a Yamadori collector here in the southeast. But before I get too far into that, share, comment, like, and subscribe to stay up to date with all of our juicy bonsai content coming in the future. You've been keeping up with all the other content that I've been doing with these trees. Uh, of course, that was the end of the series with this tree. And I uh, remember you telling me when you initially saw it, you thought it was a pretty cool little design right. there. Yeah, so for me, I, I really think this tree specifically, it, it, it shows the diversity of cypress trees. Um, they're not just straight, you know, light poles. Mm -hmm. um, and you really did a beautiful job, you know, using the movement, um, you know, in the base and the nabari, but also, you know, a multi-trunk tree, which can kind of be, um, you know, maybe threatening or, or it, it, it's difficult sometimes I would feel to use multiple trunks. Um, and you really, I feel like you did a really good job of, of knowing what you wanted to do with the design of the tree mm -hmm. and letting the tree kind of speak back to you. Um, to me, I mean, this tree more than a lot of them, it really just grabs the earth yeah, you know, with like the base. Um, I can see what you mean by that too, because yeah, these two roots right here are pretty strong. I particularly don't like how thick this root right here is. This root's fine, uh, just because it has some movement, there's some grain pattern, some bark pattern going into it. This one's just a little too blunt for me. It also, right there it ends, because that's when it was collected, it had right. been chopped there. Um, but yeah, I can definitely agree. And, and one of the things that you're seeing too is the movement overall of the tree. Um, I, I just really saw the advantage of taking this movement here in that first six inches. And that's one thing I tell a lot of people when we're designing trees is what is the first six inches of your tree or that trunk base up to the first branching on it. That's the takagari on there. And that, in my personal opinion, is the most important part. And then you can start telling the story. So... Yeah, and there were there were a few branches that were left on when I'd collected it. So not all these branches were have been grown out. It wasn't a complete stub, you know, stump of a tree. Uh, you know, so what of those did you did you like uh, that was left uh, uh, as it relates to the design that you that you decided upon the final design? Of and it was it was something you can see me kind of go through on the video before this. Uh, there will be a link to that in the, the description of this video, where he, Nate's saying like he had left some of these thicker branches, which is gonna be this branch, and there's a branch back here, and then there's another branch that was where this carve is. There was a branch sticking up right here. And it was almost like you had left it there as intentional to like, maybe it could be the next top of the tree. Right. Um, and that was something that we had talked about in the past about how you're, you were collecting trees and leaving a lot more branching on there right. in the hopes that you could use them, where sometimes that that is a good thing and a bad thing, depending on your desired right. outcome of the piece of stock. With this tree, fortunately, since I chose a flat top design, some of these branches became useful. This right. is also another branch that was left on the tree. Right. Um, and so, I mean, I chose to go with branches that were not too thick the branch that was here was actually thicker than these two branches. Um, and this branch back here is actually a little thicker than I would like it to be, but it's on the back side of the design. So it's not as, it's not going to be as noticeable. And this, this branch was just, it was a lucky branch. I mean, honestly, it's just big enough for me to consider keeping it. It had a really nice new growth coming out the top here that is starting to bud pretty well. And I, I just thought it was a decent option to keep. And of course there was this here which uh, we talk about one of the reasons why we collect Yamadori is to find something that nature can only do or suggestions of what nature could do, which uh, Nate brought another tree here we're gonna work on that only nature could create um, in just a moment here. But yeah, this, this is just stuff that, like this movement here, this, these two trunks, the way that it, it's veiny here, the way, that, the way that this was obviously where the main source of of new of like it either it'd be water or it was easier up like inland for it to gather resources from there because being in standing water cypress trees tend to be a little less on one side mm -hmm. and more on the other depending on which direction the resources are in so yeah and, and i think too there's some trees that we've collected this year this season um and and as we do that initial chop um 
there is a learning curve and you and I, it, if it's a tree that I've collected, you and I saying, look, let's leave this, knowing that on the front end, we're looking at a design possibly for the following year as you, as you actually design these trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we, we did pull some really cool trees this year. I'm really sure. excited to see what they do. Um, but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take this tree down and then I'm gonna go get the beaver tree. Okay. And we'll kind of analyze that and see what you've done. Uh, really quick with it. Sure. Yeah, we'll go from there. No doubt. All right. Well, so tell me a little bit about this one, Nate. So, what, where did you get it from? What, what's going on with it, and what have you done so far? Yeah. So, this was the backside of a really big uh, borderline lake pond. Uh, wasn't really a whole lot of collectible uh, trees size-wise. Um, this was one of a few that, honestly, as I saw it, I thought it was. Uh, you know, something that a beaver had gotten a hold to. Uh, there was no, well, there was some stubs. It was it was chopped here. It was cut here, um, basically by by an animal. Um, you know, so uh, when I came on it, honestly, I I thought it was interesting. I really didn't think it was that great of a tree. Mm -hmm. um, I, obviously, I saw the movement here. Um, there's some things. You know, going on that obviously have that nature can only produce. I mean, some of the graininess, uh, some of the style. I mean, this is a really there's a lot that's happened to this tree. Um, you talking about all the all the nubs and stuff on here? Right. Yeah, that wasn't done by anything I, you know, I'd look to uh, to create design wise. This is a tree that's just been out of water for a year now. Um, I did wire, put a little bit of wire on. Um, put a little bit of movement into it. Um, you know, I'd be curious of your thoughts with, uh, not only design wise, but here up top, you know, possibly creating an informal. Um, there's a lot of length to these um, that, you know, we can have a conversation about. And just, just kind of to get a feel for how tall, when you found the tree, how tall was it? How? Was yeah, it? so it was, the cut was here. So it was, you know, it would hit so something either a beaver or nature something in nature had already cut right. it when you found it so right. i would say in this this situation and i'm assuming that these branches uh, the ones that are kind of existent they were a little longer there was yeah. some stuff out here yeah um and we've come across a few trees we had gone on a little scouting adventure and found a few other beaver right chew trees and they look like little bushes wow. uh, and so I mean, this, like we were saying just a second ago with the Amadori, this is made by nature. And I mean, there's a lot of really great things going on with this tree. I remember we were going through your stock mm -hmm. uh, probably a couple of months ago. We were just talking about some of the stuff that you're personally developing for yourself. And I remember you were showing me like, look at this tree's flare. Look at this, look at the knee on this one. I came across this and I was like, Nate, this is, yeah. this is like the best one. And it's yeah. only because, it's only because the way that the base is it's nice and tapered down here. There's a flare. There's a naturally occurring flare already. Uh, where there are bite marks in the trunk, it actually has some movement and some almost like oscillating movement. Like it moves yeah. from side to side and it turns. Right. Um, and then for, it, you almost like you have a beaver bonsai artist out in the woods. He he like bit it like in the right spots at the right, right. time. It seems like so. Um, it is very, very good that you let this grow out right here. Um, cause I'm starting to see like things like where the old, there's an old ch chop mark right here yeah. and it's starting to heal over and this is healing over right here nicely, right yeah. behind this branch. And so, uh, and in case some of you, in case some of y'all are curious, uh, yes, there are beavers in Louisiana and yes, they can do some serious damage, uh, to s some trees. And I have a few photos, we'll flash them in. And it's just, it looks like a cartoon where you get this big base of a trunk. It's like, it's gonna be like four or five feet across. Yeah. And then they're eaten into a little fine point, just like you see in a cartoon and the tree's falling over. I mean, and so there's big trees and they also go after these small trees. And they're, I mean, it could be up for debate too, for people who are from the Southeast are also familiar with Nutri rats. Right. Nutri rats can do that type of damage as well. But um, it's this, there's a couple of marks right here where beavers are kind of known for, for doing this kind of 
slanted kind of chew. There's one right here as well. Um, I'll have to get a good zoom in on some of the beaver marks on this. There's one right there. And this is just an indicator. I mean, that beaver ate this tree off at those angles. And it's almost like he was onto something there. And there's some really, you see that? There's some really good stuff going on in there as far as movement goes. Um, what, what are your thoughts on how long ago, how long did this movement take? To develop like that? Yeah. Looking at the tree, I have a tree that is similar to this as far as its size and what it looks like. And it was grazed on cows in a cow pasture, and it has a similar look to it. It has some parts where it just moves back and forth because the cows ate on it one side and ate on the other side. And uh, But this one's a little bit more unique in that aspect. And I'm willing to bet that this base right here, this base probably can't be any older than 20 years old. I mean, it doesn't sound crazy or anything, but the tree probably did get to a certain point. And I'm saying this is probably 20 years old down here. Yeah. Uh, just because a 20 year old bald cypress, like not, you know, if you don't stop them from growing, a 20 year old bald cypress can get like probably two feet to three feet in, in diameter pretty quick. Yeah, well this this was, again, the depth of the grow out pot is about the depth of the standing water it was in. Okay. Um, and it was definitely an understory hmm. uh, tree. So it was already- It was shaded out. It was already sure. bitten down to a certain height and then it was just almost like an under stunted for sure yeah it was definitely it was just it became the runt because of the damage it took right and uh yeah it just naturally became dwarfed by nature i mean and this is i mean this is that one that mil one in a million thing that you find and so you see what i've done with the other trees in the previous videos for the flat top bald cypress series and i mean some of those trees uh well the three I, i'm going to say a few of them two of them had the makings of being able to become a flat top or more believable natural kind of feel yeah. quicker than than the other one. There was the the one in the second video that I had to do a lot of wood carving and we're just going to do a lot of waiting and a lot of growing to get that to be believable. With this tree, I mean, I mean the branches are there. Yeah. And to make a really good to make good bonsai, all you need is a couple of good branches. I mean, it's already got one, two, three four, five, six, seven, you got an odd number of branches on the trunk line here, which is good enough, it's more than enough, because you can ramify these really well. And then the top, I mean. Beautiful taper already. How much more do you let, the question is how much more do you let that grow? Right. And it looks like it's there. Let's just kind of talk about, where where was the front of this that you were imagining for this tree? So, a couple things. The, the movement here, also these stubs, um, you wanted to push those forward? Well, so there's smaller one, one pretty much towards the front and then this one here. Um, you know, my question, um, you know, again, I'm not set on an informal upright. I'm not set on a, on, on pushing this to be a flat top. Uh, but as a flat top, typically, and much like you did with the other videos, you had created kind of a gym here and this up top would be thicker. Um, you know, so again, I'd be curious what you thought. There's a lot of really natural movement with these, you know, these middle branching. It allows you to see the movement here yeah. in the tree itself. Um, and really, I mean, it's, it's a wide, you know, to me, this is a really strong, you know, buttress here. Mm -hmm. uh, really strong and this this flares. Let's turn it all the way around. Okay. Because I want to see this base and we've talked about how we want to see the widest point of the trunk base up from the Nabari up to the base and it looks like it's actually here and I mean you can't I mean you can fix the base but this is the hardest thing to fix on a developed like when you're developing bone size, this is the hardest thing to fix. And so since these roots right here are really strong, I know that you have that, that really strong root. Yeah. And you said it was the one, this one here. Yeah. Um, yeah. My only thing with, with this, this here seems a little flat and, um, and this, and I can see that because back here, right. If you were to use this side, 
there's a there's a section here that is uninteresting, and, and the trunk goes kind of straight here. Yeah. If we turn it around. It is it is still kind of straight, honestly, unfortunately, and and I mean a lot of this is straight, yeah. but there's a twist to this tree that I'm that I see a little bit right here, and one of the things I've been doing with the the other trees that we designed for your wire brush, yeah, the wire brush. I put it down. I think it's on the table. I thought it was here. Oh, there it is. And one of the things that I was doing before I get too far is because with bald cypress is because they're so long grained, you kind of brush away some of this bark. And we clean this out. And we and also getting this moss off of here and digging a little deeper lets us see what's a lot and what's not. You know, clean up some of the dead wood stumps on here. See what they look like. It's a little furry, uh, just because of how fiber, fibrous the bark is. But it looks like, I mean, as we go to this big, this root right here, it has a good spread on it. Yeah. I would say that with this tree, in my personal opinion, let me get a chopstick. With the with the chopstick, I'm gonna mark where I think designing this tree will go forward. Personal. Yeah. It's your tree, but I, you know, my recommendation as far as the front. Well, obviously I respect. And, <laughs> and you can say, I oh, know, man, I want to do it this way. I mean, that, that's fine. I don't want you to feel like my way is the only way. This is just from, from knowing and knowing what makes the best possible yeah. design for a tree is it usually starts with the best front and the best base. Because like I was saying earlier is, we can fix bases, but it's a lot more difficult. And on a bolt cypress, you can root graft, you can thread graft, or approach graft roots in there. And you can just throw that stuff on the floor if you want. And that stuff is doable, but from this, this part right here where Nate said, it does look a little blank, which I could totally see that, you could throw a couple of root grafts in there and fix mm -hmm. that in right. one season. Um, and this tree, should stay in this pot one more year, but right. next the next year when we go to repot, you could easily do those approach grafts, and and you'll be surprised how fast they take. So I think anywhere between here to here is where you should be looking for your front, because everything back here, these roots don't make that big right impression. So how much, based on the angle that you would would choose as the final front, how much would this movement? play into because it it literally there is a small twist but it does it does kind of play back this way more than it does left to right and I'm just looking at it from behind the camera and the base at the same time Ooh, that's nice okay yeah, I think here you start to be able to see and right there so okay so now we have two other so we're starting to hone in we're starting to hone in where the front of this tree could be. So when you did that just now, and I know Nate's gonna have his 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 front, and I'm gonna have my front, and we're gonna kinda go back and forth and see which one could really, you know, which one could work, and also, you could always change the front in the future, because things could change, the front could get, one front could get better in time, yeah. you might wire something into a position and then be like, wait, I don't remember doing that because you would turn it around. Magic might have happened that you didn't notice before. So my, so this front is what you're talking about. Correct. Yeah. And then my maybe front was actually right. There's a twist in the, in the trunk. Mm -hmm. Right there. Right. No, I got it. I, I remember roughly where it was. So right there. So yeah, you go behind the camera now. And so let's look at your front first. And so you see in your front that movement, it goes it this way, yeah. then it comes back, and then it comes back over the top, right? It, it, that is somewhat two dimensional. Somewhat. And then with, the, with wiring the branches, we could fix some of those yeah. things. Um, and this, this is a good front. I like this front. 
it, you can use both of these branches up here. They're both, both visual. Uh, they do become kind of bar branchy looking. Uh, that's the only real issue I see with it. Yeah. Um, and you have some interesting scarring. It puts some of your, your little right. marks here to the front, and then it makes this branch useful. I know with this front, mm -hmm. it seems not like, it's like, oh no, I'm gonna lose this branch, but in reality, this branch could be removed or, I mean, you could always grow something else. Yeah. You could bring this branch around this to this side, but this front here is also really interesting to me because the way that the tree comes around, hooks yeah. back and then comes back around again. Yeah. And then you have, you know, all those big knobs and stuff. They're not in the front of the tree, which I wouldn't say those are the main feature. Those are interesting, but this is this is stuff that will either it'll either eventually rot away or fall off with time. Uh, there are things that that could change, and also from this front, you get boom, you get that nice big broad base. Right. From the front that you're looking at, there's there's no root over here. Correct. To support that, it doesn't make it look as big. Correct. So. Well, and and it's small, like you say, but there's all these these things that are going on the side of this is the better front. You have this, you know, this scarring here, whatever in the world, you know, makes that it looks scar. like something laid into it, and it, I, I just I say it like the tree ate into what it was. So the the cambium, the new layer of bark that just grew over it. So something probably just pressed into the tree there. It looks like an old branch from another plant that was nearby, or maybe it was off the tree itself, or maybe it is a scar. Maybe something ran into it. But um, this this right here is going to go away. It's already starting to. Yeah. There's just a lot of grainy things that are going on, whether it be you know over you know these portions, which is again the unpredictability of cypress. I mean, this is growing down. I don't know if that was at one point an aerial root. It was. You know, that you know water line here. Yeah, because uh, a lot of the trees that we've pulled out of the standing water situations, they do have aerial roots. And what, what we're saying is aerial roots, they're not, so a true aerial root is a root that is on the trunk because of how humid it is in its environment, that that root's actually able to exist yeah. like in, in the air and like literally grow straight down to the ground. Whereas these roots are, submerged on submerged submerged and so they're they're getting that help to come down and they're, they're higher up on the trunk where, than where they should be um and that's higher up in the trunk where they should be for bone side design where yeah. it is considered aesthetically pleasing uh to look at i have another tree that that i had mentioned earlier where it's nothing but those those two, uh, what we call them two roots or aerial looking roots coming off of the tree that needs to be addressed later on so i don't think this is an issue yeah um it's, it had, it adds a poison point of interest. It will, it is an old piece of wood. It probably will rot away one, one day, which it won't break your heart, but it'll be a little knob. Yeah. There's little knobs all over this tree and there's little areas where there's pieces of wood. So in my personal opinion, Nate, is that you keep this front and mm -hmm. you can use this branch in the design for now and bring it around or something. And then whenever a better branch presents this opportunity, the opportunity I would go for it. Um, and then remove this one eventually. And also, since this is such a tall, yeah. skinny tree with so much great movement already, the branches need to be tight and right. dense on the top of this tree. Yeah, and that was, you know, me wiring it, and that was why I specifically said, Evan, I wanna come by and bring it, because I want these to, to add, you know, secondary branching, obviously much tighter to the trunk. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, like, these are pretty, you know, these are these top, yeah. Um, so I went ahead and cut one back. Um, you know, we could, you know, create some movement here with this um, if we chose. But I think a better option is just much like I did back here is to cut it back. Yes. Um, curious, and this is this isn't necessarily an aspiration with this tree. Um, would a tree like this that has so many unique Characteristics would this be a tree that you feel would show well or no? In the future, if you got this tree, I mean, you got all the the branching, your desired branching set up correctly, and you did the proper way of putting ramification into the branches, yeah. getting a good pot for this tree, yeah. and 
you know, just keeping it, keeping it to a certain quality. Yes, yeah. this is a showable tree. Um, based on, based on just, based on the, the movement and yeah. the, and the naturalness to this tree. And a lot of bald cypresses that are, I've seen in show are normally taller, skinnier, yeah. or it's the other way around where they're really, really wide in the base and you get that really beautiful fluting and it's, does that seem forced to you? What the, the fluting? Well, the, again, how the, the girth of the tree and, and forced into a smaller pot mm -hmm. um, versus this being a much more naturalistic look of a cypress itself. Um, as far as the forced perspective of having a big base, I don't, that is permittable in my opinion. As far as the proportions make sense, that's what I was saying is like with some of these trees with massive bases, they still need to be a certain height for yeah. them to be believable and feel like bald cypress. Uh -huh. uh, now there's some people that like to do their trees where they're, they've, and, and you gotta kind of be familiar with the area with the Atchafalaya Basin, the Henderson Swamp mm -hmm. that is in between, right in between the, the, that area where you're going through all the, the black gum groves, and then you hit this area where you hit the, the Whiskey Bay area, and right. then you're getting to Henderson Swamp, and that's when the cypress trees change into these big, giant, fat bases. Right. But they're, but they're like hollow and dead on the top, and they have like natural, naturally occurring gin or deadwood features, and their, their tops are scraggly, and they just look like stout little, right. little squat trees. In, in reality, they're huge, but... Um, that's kind of some people try to chase that that look with bald yeah. cypress, and not every tree with a big base fits that that category yeah. for design. This one, you don't have the big giant buttressing things on. You have some buttressing happening, but not to the degree where you see on some of those trees where they've got. And you've brought some in yeah. where they've got those big flutes, yeah. and you can see it. It does like this on the inside of the yeah. tree, and that's that's the ones that you should concentrate on using the base as the main quality of it. Yeah. This one, the main quality is going to be this no naturally occurring movement. And right. this, doing this, like being a bonsai grower, doing this type of work takes, I mean, doing this alone takes about 15 to 20 years to get this looking like this. Mm. So that's why I said like, this tree could be about 20 years old because I know how long it takes to do that. Mm -hmm. That takes a long time and, and yeah, like, as far as the overall design of this tree, I don't see a flat top tree in this. I see, yeah. I see a tall, slender tree that is natural feeling, but it's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be something that shows the swampiness. It'll be more yeah. of, my opinion, more of like an inland tree. Because mm -hmm. inland, taller bald cypress trees, they grow almost like Christmas trees. And... Uh, especially if you go to New Orleans and you go down the, down the main drag in New Orleans and some of the older neighborhoods in the city, you'll see these big, big cypress trees that look kind of like this and they've been affected by, you know, storms and stuff, but they don't have the big flutes. Yeah. They're more like park trees or something like that. And they just get really, really big and tall and slender like this. Yeah. So I think it would be better suited for that look um, with the things that nature has already done. To it, which you can't replicate either. That's right. Uh, after me and Nate kind of talked it through a little bit, we have agreed to go with this as a potential front of the tree for now. And we had looked at the other front that he had, oops, sorry, <laughs> that he had pointed out. And uh, we had started to look into this here where there's a little bit of inverse taper and how the base kind of falls short there. So I'm gonna turn it one more time at you. So that's why I find this to be better. And we've agreed that this will work. Uh, we took some of the wire off of there that he had put on um, and had some movement put in some of these branches. And we're just kind of going through right now. We're going to talk about which branches to keep on and which ones to take off or where, where to shorten and when to shorten. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, this branch right here that's now in the back. There is a branch here. Let me see. Make sure it's alive. It's alive. So one way to find out if a bald cypress branch is alive, just go in and bend it. Bend it more than you would think because, it, like for instance, like I'm bending this branch back towards the camera. Bending it like this 
on a dead, dry bald cypress branch, it would have cracked just instantly. It would just popped in half. And also, if you listen, which you might be able to hear it, it's very subtle. Mm -hmm. You'll hear like a little bit of like a like a like tissues kind of like kind of noise. Like it's almost like a little crackling noise inside. And uh, someone once told me like if you're out in the woods and you're hunting bald cypress and you want to see if a branch is alive, you also bite on it. And if it has like a crisp kind of sound to it when you bite onto it, that means there's moisture in it. I had gone that far to see if one's alive. Bye yeah, bye. <laughs> some people, uh, some people I've talked to in the past about collecting cypress trees. That's that's something that they've done. Uh, it works for them. Well, there is something to be said about collecting a tree that is healthy versus one that's, you know, yeah, struggling. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put wire on this branch and move it around. Because of the way that the movement is in this tree, I think moving it over here and using this branch for now, just so you'll have something to play with. Okay. Maybe it'll become part of the tree in the future. It'll yeah. become some part of the design, but just so you have something visually down here for now. Uh, because this this is a personal tree for Nate. It's just gonna be in his personal collection, but we are gonna help him develop it into a good quality tree because he does go out and collect our high quality cypress trees, so Nate needs a couple of good trees too. So we're going to bring that branch around with some heavy gauge wire. And honestly, honestly, I'm going to take off a good bit of it too. Like, I'm going to take off, not all of this branch is necessary because just like the tree, we need the branches to taper as well. So let's see. Take off right there. You can just hold on to that. Yeah. Yep. There's lots of moisture in that branch. I'm gonna bite down on too. You can see that. And then. So this tree has yet to start pushing buds. We just this morning. It's our first. Uh, <laughs> it's the first relief. Right. That we've had in a while. You know what's better if I anchor this on there? Yeah. That's what I was. Yeah. I was just going for the, I was going for the, the root up to the branch, which sometimes works. But yeah, anyway, the weather this morning, you were saying. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple cypress trees that you've repotted, I don't know, in the last maybe two weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had some definite unusual, you know, South Louisiana weather. Mm -hmm. uh, that's impacted not only you know bud push for these trees, but but also you know for me collecting. Yeah, it's uh it's definitely been a really weird collecting season because we were we were collecting what like last weekend? Not not this yeah, past I weekend. Yeah, I collected. Uh, yeah, within the last week and a half and a couple of my spots are you know near near a river and obviously with all the the not just the cold weather but all the rain that we've had and north of us um, it's definitely impacted the water levels and some places we wanted to go to collect a few trees mm -hmm. um, you know it's at flood stage which I mean it's not normally like that here so but it has pushed us back, and this is the first week. I mean, this is the first day. I mean, we're running out of time here to work on some trees. This is not 100% necessary. <laughs> this is, um, I mean, this is something that this tree definitely needs is some design work. But as far as everything else goes, you got like repotting and, and correcting things like doing some carving or setting, setting buds for next year. I mean, there's all kinds of work that has just been awkwardly pushed back or, or bit put in jeopardy, so we'll see. Well, just to give context, last night the low was, what, 2021? 20, yeah, the, the low was, for you, might have been a little bit lower. For me, it was, um, it was 25. Yeah. So. And we got a high today of mid, upper 50s. Yeah, and it, tonight's not going to be that bad either. So tonight will be, tonight will probably be around 30, 
four. Just over freezing. Yeah. Just right above freezing. So everything's back out again. Uh, so basically what I did there, Nate, let me look at it where I've got that placement. What I did there is I, I'm using this as kind of like your first branch now. Mm -hmm. So I can move it just a little bit more. It's for the sake of not blowing the branch off the tree too, you know. <laughs> but now it's in an area where it's useful. And in the case that Nate's growing this tree, you might be able to just turn it a little bit and seed a little bit better. But I think it... Oh, yeah, that thing will get your shins. Yep. <laughs> um, look on the camera, make sure you need to get the, the placement off. Is it still in a good place? Yeah, it's good. Okay. So um, this right here, I think is gonna be good. If the branch starts growing out and you get strong and you get like a lot of nice back branching, I think this could be a good branch to use in the future. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I would leave it as it is for now. Do you look for anything or desire for anything to come back? In the future you will. Yeah. Like you'll have some stuff come off the back here and you can make the, the pad or the branch fill in back here. Mm -hmm. Back This back branch area, this thing right here is all right because this could be your next branch. Yeah. So your first, your second branch is here technically. And now this one cuts across the trunk. We're gonna have to remove it. Okay. Or, let's see. Let me just, look, let me just address the, the situation real quick. It really does, like we were saying, it comes out at an awkward angle. Yeah. And these branches here, they, they, they kind of meet each other. So, I mean, oh man, that's tough. And also, so one of the rules that's old school rule is that you should never have a, a branch that comes from the inside of a curve. You should never have a branch that's on a pigeon breast, is what they call it. Uh, so these branches kind of fall into this, but it's so curvy up here. Mm -hmm. I think that all these branches should be useful for now. Except for... Mm, the one coming straight out? The one coming straight at the, the viewer. Yeah is, I mean, it could still be moved. So I would say, let's just keep it for now. Okay. Uh, it does need to come back. It is getting a little right. little thick for my, my taste, personally. Like this, right, the thickness on this is decent. Mm -hmm. We come up, thickness on this one is all right. But when we're up here in the tall, this tall tree, these branches should be no thicker than the next preceding branch. And these, these up here are pretty thick. So we're going to talk about how to, to work with that in a little while here. But this branch, I think, is maxed out as far as size. So it actually should be cut back. All right, so get this piece of wire. We'll go around the back side here. And you want to apply that on your end. Really want to get close to that shoulder. Yeah. And nice, really nice even coils there. All right. Where's mine are? My coils on my on my wiring jobs, they look they look like they kind of Every, I gave you the irregular branch, or you gave me the... <laughs> the, the, the more straight one. <laughs> um, my, the way that I wire sometimes is, I guess, kind of dependent on, on the situation. I yeah. don't know. If I'm trying to get some quick movement out of something, then I, I do looser coils. If I'm trying to be really precise, I feel myself doing yeah. a little bit more. Or like if there's a particular area where I'm trying to get the the hold, I make sure that I hit that branch in a particular spot. Yeah. Um, and I think that's kind of justifies how how my, my coils look. But I mean Nate's got almost like picture perfect perfect uh, coils going on there. You got a good t-shirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so just making sure that this is gonna be enough to hold this branch to pull it out. For that, this I feel like could come somewhere like that. And I mean, what really matters is from here to here. 
because that's going to come off. That this is going to come off in the future. I think this branch has some more growing to do. So this one, we're going to leave the, the tip up towards the light. Okay. This one, on the other hand, is already at the thickness where I feel like it could be cut off there. And we're going to do that thing where you see you see the branches go from up to, I mean, from downwards to up. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a classical kind of form. And really that's, we're talking more about the treatment of this branch in a little while here. But uh, that's really like following the basics first before we start doing some really experimental stuff. I want to see the basic design of the branches first before we try to do anything crazy with this tree. Because this tree does have a very good classical look and taper already. So let's go ahead and put it in that classical look and see where we can go from there. Um, and so when we get up here, so me looking at it, at least from the angle I'm at, you know, this branch will be shaded out by this one. Obviously this will be cut back. Yeah, this one's gonna get cut back. This one's yeah. more than big enough and this one's too big. Okay. So this one, since you've already got the wire on there, let's go ahead and move it. I'm sorry, I'm probably hitting the head with it. Let's go ahead and move it into the space where it is part of the crown and it doesn't shade out the branching below. Okay. And it gives me the leverage to go in and take that off just a little bit shorter you want to hold on to it so it's a good uh, while to me okay uh, so a little bit more forward a little bit more back and now this branch is just an anchor because I'm going to be honest with you, Nate, this mm -hmm. one is too big and needs, needs yeah. to come off in the future. But for now, I'm just going to use it as an anchor branch. Ooh, flesh. Um, I hurt myself on camera every once in a while. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that felt awful. But yeah, this is just going to help anchor this branch and this branch here. And then the top is actually at that point now mm -hmm. where I think it's time to chop it. I mean, okay. this is all going to heal with time, but I do like where it is exposed. So since we've already grown out that taper, I think it's ready to be chopped. Let's go ahead and start here and not get my finger cut, caught in the tool again, because that was splendid. Well, and that's usually a, a second year, uh, a second year move or a second year, you know, tight cut. To make that chop after a leader's grown out. This is only the first year after this tree's been. It was already there. Collected. That all that work was already done by nature. Um, so now these branches here just need to be grown out and right. get some thickness to them. This. We were just kind of talking to after my incident, and uh, about how all the work has been done, and now so Nate's job this season is going to be. Don't let this go crazy again, but you will have another branch or bud that will come out here and be that next section of it. And you'll let it grow for, you know, the first flush and let it get thick and then cut to that. So you start building that smaller. Right. But I mean, it's not even that you need to do that next section of, of taper into this. Right. It's already there. You just need to start finding the multiple little new br branches that will turn into the crown of this tree potentially, but make sure that the silhouette of the tree stays nice and tight right. and then kind of comes out and it's going to come out further on this side. Um, these branches right here and here will be allowed to just run long. And let me just whip some wire onto this right here. And this will just be kind of allowed to grow out. This will be allowed to grow out like this. And it's and it's just my habit of of just wiring everything. It only gives you that control. Yeah, it, with cypress trees especially, you want the first the first couple of years you're in development of a tree, you really really do want control over the, the growth because they 
once they get happy and they they get established, they will grow very fast and almost seemingly out of control if you don't stay on top of them. And you'll you'll walk back to a tree three months later after a really strong flush and start to see swelling or branches just got out of hand, it got too big. Now you had to cut that branch off and start over again. Right, so this wire, I mean, it's not gonna be on extremely long. For a bald cypress, it could be on for the matter for the matter of up to up to a month or two. Right. Uh, especially in in our really hot spring, like our spring comes out kind of mild, but then the temperature just starts going up and up and up, and that's when bald cypresses just go nuts and they start growing very rapidly. I have wired a bald cypress, and then the wire bit in the next month, and then I took the wire off, wired again, and then the wire bit in again. Wow. And so I got a, I got the structure of the tree uh, set pretty quickly from that. Um, but I mean, that's just, that's something you could do with this tree. But since this tree has been only out of the ground for a short period of time, I wouldn't be as aggressive. I would give this tree a nice good flush, mm -hmm. only pinch growth. Don't. Right. Uh, Not going to defoliate. No, no June, defoliation. July. Right. No, absolutely no. Now thinning. Is something yeah. when we'll bring this tree back into the into the shop and we'll do progress of this tree. Make sure you keep me updated on what the tree looks like. So when it gets flushed, then we'll do another video where we go in and do a little partial like thinning. We're yeah. not gonna nep. That's one thing I know. It might be tossed around on forums and stuff like that, but I don't fully defoliate my bald cypress. Uh, it puts them in a very weakened state. Now, if the tree is in super good health and you want a long lasting fall color, you do that on a lot of deciduous trees. On bald cypresses, it's okay. We do get a short, like we do get a good long lasting fall color in that. But if you keep your leaves on healthy, strong, mature, dark bald cypress leaves for, you know, for the entirety of the summer, those leaves, and we, I had some pictures um, from last year, from last fall, how deep red and, and yeah. like crimson and red those leaves were and then they, they went to that really nice light rust color and stayed on there for like three months until they finally fell. They fell like only like two months ago. And so that I, I, went through, I went through is typically short, but yeah, I mean, you, that's just something that we're, we try to stray away from. Partial defoliation or thinning is a better word for it because we're just trying to get light into the interior of the branches mm -hmm. to help back budding, to help weaker branches have right. strength. We want to make sure that the top of this tree does not overpower the bottom. Right. So if you did do a partial defoliation, um, would you wait until, say, two years following, or would you give a partial defoliation each year? I would do thinning impartial defoliation yeah. every time that the tree is in really strong vigor right. and is growing like that. Um, I've seen older bald cypress specimens, we have a couple of older bald cy cypress specimens at the nursery here that they do have lots of vigor mm -hmm. given, given what has been done, like a repotting, like a really right. hard root pruning, or maybe a sacrificial branch was taken off. There's a and there's like a new a wave of responsive, yeah, of vigor, very strong vigor. And, um, and that's something that you should just be aware of. And sometimes, I mean, and it's, and it sounds weird to kind of think about it, but like bald cypresses, they they do have the capability of being slowed down. Mm -hmm. That means some, there's one tree out here I can think of, uh, last year, it didn't put out any shoots, any shoots longer than this. It was... I mean, there were some shoots that came out like this, but it was tight. It was nice and tight. Um, I had made sure not to fertilize it all that much because I didn't want it to get out of hand because the we all, all the structure is there. I'm looking to refine that tree. So, um, so yeah, like those. This, tr this tree's still though going to push a lot of new growth because it's it's early and it's it's still early, yeah. And it's it's a a, a deeper pot, a grow out container. Mm -hmm. um, and when we not. Not this year, but the next year we're going to do another repot. Yeah, that's going to be another wave of, of, of strong growth right. because it's in, and this is something too. You can do this, and uh, it isn't common practice. That's fertilizer. 
That's good. Um, this is the, like a peat soil mix. So peat mixture, peat moss soil mix, uh, regular potting soil. He's got Osmico. He's got a couple of other things going on, pine bark in here. And, uh, but when we go put this into, into our highly aerobic, really like well draining soil, it's, everything's going to change for this tree. Mm -hmm. It's going to grow super fast as far as trying to put out new buds and get new bud lengths going on because the root system's going to get thicker and denser than it could in this soil. And that's going to just be another time to harness that. Yeah. And that, that will be more likely to be the year when you do a, you know, defoliate, like partial or thinning kind of procedure like that. This year, I would just say be more worried about pinching out and keeping the shoots not, you know, don't let them get overly long. Right. So, but other than that, this this is going to be a really cool tree going forward. No doubt. So, but uh, we're going to go ahead and just wrap there, and then uh, and then we'll look forward to looking at this tree and watching it develop over the next couple of years yeah, as part of part of our uh, our bald cypress series videos here. So, thanks for watching the video, guys. Uh, don't don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and look for more Underhill Boneside content in the future.